Welcome to JavaScript tutorial number 10, Date and Math Objects. In this video, we'll be learning about using and manipulating dates with JavaScript, as well as looking at some of JavaScript's more complex math functions. A large amount of this video will be looking at specific functions and what they do. Every video of all slideshows and code available in the description. JavaScript has some objects that can be used anywhere, called persistent objects. They provide useful functions and tools that are commonly used in programming. For example, the math object can be accessed at any time and holds common math functions and math constants. Here, we grab the value of pi up to 15 decimal points, so you don't have to remember it. The first three useful functions we're going to look at are for rounding decimal numbers. The seal function will round the number upwards towards the ceiling, while the floor function will round the number down towards the floor. The actual round function will round to the nearest hole. If the value is exactly half, it will be rounded up. Next, we have the trigonometry functions. You may never need to use them, but it's nice to know they're there. They are pretty self-explanatory with what they do. Just keep in mind that when you're dealing with them, that the values are all in radians. Random can be a super useful function when you need it, returning a random value between 0 and 1, which you can then multiply to increase the range of the number. Another two useful functions to keep in mind are the square root function and the power function. Finally, if you're doing any serious math in your code, it's likely that you'll use one of these constants. Pi, if you're doing anything with circles. E, also known as Euler's number, used as a base for logarithmic functions. Then we have the square root of a half. This is a pre-calculated value of 0 0.707 as it's quite slow for the square root function to calculate it, so the constant is there for easy use. Ok, let's build a simple game to test a few of the math functions. We'll build a guess the number game, and have the computer pick a random number between 1 and 100, and then we'll have to guess it. Let's call it guess.html. Alright, so I'm just going to open up the add file that we made previously, and we're going to modify that, so I'll save that as. And we'll call it guess.html. Right, so I'm going to strip everything out of outside of our function, get rid of our people um, variable at the start there. And we're going to have our input as our guess. And the ID we'll call it guess. And then our button on click is going to call try. And we don't need this name section, so we can just remove that out. Right, so I'm going to first uh, create my function. So my function is going to be, uh, I'll call it check guest, check guess, and I'll copy and put that inside my on click. All right, so just before my function on the line before, I'm going to create a variable which is going to hold the hidden number. So I'll call it hidden num, and it's going to equal uh, math dot floor. So we're going to round down. The result of math math dot random so that'll return a value between zero and one in decimal, and I'm going to multiply that by a hundred so that way it's between zero and ninety nine, and that's going to be floored down for, so it's zero to ninety nine, and then I'm going to add one to it so it's between one to one hundred. All right, so now that I've got a hidden number, what I'm going to need to do is going to check whether that is uh, what my guess is equal to. So let's get the guess. So var guess is equal to document dot get element by ID. And we're going to get the value of the guess element dot value. All right. So we've gotten the guess. Now I'm going to create a ver variable for out, which is going to be where we output back to the user when they try guessing. All right, so now I need to check whether the guess is equal to I had a number. So if guess is equal to the hidden num, then we're going to out equals correct exclamation mark. Um, else if so if it's not equal to guess is greater than hidden num, then we're going to set out 
to equal to high. I'll remove that capital H too high else. So if it's uh, not too high and it's not equal to, then it's going to be too low. So out equals too low. All right. So now that we've gotten what our output is going to be, we can give it back to our user. So document dot get element by ID. And we want to get the output uh, variable or the output ID, which is our paragraph. We're going to set the inner HTML to equal out. All right. So that's our function written. And we'll just add a paragraph tag above our guess. And we'll do uh, try to guess the number between 1 and 100. And then we'll close off our paragraph tag. All right. Cool. So let's save that and we'll give that a shot. So I'll drag that into our web browser and we get try to guess the number between 1 and 100. So logically I'll start with 50. I'll try. It's too low. Let's try uh, 75. That's still too low. Let's try 90. It's too high. All right. So let's go like 80. Still too low. So let's try 85. Too high, maybe 83. Too high still, uh, 80, 82. Correct, awesome. You got the right number. If I wanted to give it another shot, I can just refresh the page and it'll regenerate a new number. If we try, we see it's no longer 82. Uh, so we try 50. Anyway, we'll move on from here. Awesome. I highly recommend that you try adding on to this game. Maybe keep track of how many times the player guesses, or perhaps build a tool to guess it for you in the most efficient way possible. All right, now onto the super useful date persistent object. Websites often have to deal with or manage dates. When a post was made, when a user last logged in, how long until event starts, etc. Understanding that the date object exists will aid when you inevitably have to deal with dates. There is tools for handling time zones or manipulating or comparing dates. In the example here, we have how to get the current date and time and how to get the date and time object of a certain day. Generally, we want to create an object to hold a date at a certain time. Here, we have three different ways of creating a new date object. Milliseconds, a date string, or with specific values. Once we have a date object, we can start interacting with it. Now that we have a separate date object, we can get any of the values out that we need from that specific time. While all of these have get before them, there is also a set version if you want to tweak the date more. If you wanted to get the elapsed time between one date and now, you could minus the dates from each other and you'll be left with the difference between the dates, which could be then used to calculate how long something took, how long ago a post was made, etc. There are many more functions available, so I'll leave a link in the description. Alright, let's try using the date object now. Let's build a small script that lets us time how long our JavaScript function takes. This is quite useful if you notice that one of your functions is running slow. Because our computers are quite fast, we'll purposely make a slow function just so we can see our timer working. Let's call it timeit.html. All right, so I'm going to uh, grab possibly our sum, and we'll use that as a template. So if I'll save as, we're going to call it timeit, timeit.html. All right, so I'm going to remove everything outside of this function, or inside this function rather, and move that down a bit. And what I need to do is I'm going to move our paragraph up above because I want to run this all in one script. So that way it does exist before I try and put values into it. All right, so now I'm going to remove these, uh, the rest of our HTML. All right, so inside of our script, the First thing I want to do is make sure I set up my function. So I'm going to call it um, run loops. And I'll pass in the value n. So that's going to be how many times the loop runs. And then inside, I'm going to do for uh, var i equals 0. i is less than n. 
and then I++. Right, and then inside my for, I'm just going to console.log because I know that this function will take a little while to run. And then I'm going to do I dot two string, so two string. And that'll turn that into a string and output it. All right. So I know that that run loops function is going to take a little bit to resolve. Now I'm going to do a var start time. And that's going to equal uh, date dot now. So the exact moment that this function runs, what is the current date and time? And then I'm going to run loops. So I'm going to run the function and I'll, um, I'll just run a 140, 141 loops just to go for now. So I know that should take roughly uh, 80 milliseconds, maybe longer while I'm recording. And let's do var uh, end time. And that's going to equal date dot now. Again, except this time it'll be when this date function runs. So theoretically it should be a couple of hundred milliseconds after the original one. All right, so now that we have both of the different times, I'm going to create a var output. And this is going to equal, uh, we'll do time taken plus the string of uh, end time minus start time. So I'll get the difference between the two plus and then space milliseconds. All right. And now we're going to uh, document dot get element by ID. And we're going to grab output. And we're going to set the inner HTML to equal output. All right. So now that we've written out a little time it, so it'll run 141 loops and output each one of those to the console. And then we'll get the two different times and then it'll pop up on screen. So I've saved that. Let's drag time it into our browser. And time took was eight milliseconds. So that was super quick. So if I uh, open up inspect element, I go to our console here. We've got all of the numbers output. And if we were to run it again with our console open, you notice that it took it took actually quite uh, much more time because our web browser had to update it inside of our console here. And we've got all of our numbers output. Awesome, so we've just timed it and we've got different times. So if we run it again, do we get a different time? Yep, 48 milliseconds. So we can see that on average, our, our function is taking around about 49 milliseconds to complete. Um, with the console open. If we close it, we'll get a different result. 9 milliseconds, 10 milliseconds. Yeah, so around there. Awesome. This concludes our look at date and math in JavaScript. The tutorials will be getting a bit more advanced from here on. Next, we'll be looking at storing data between pages and sessions using cookies and local storage. If you have any questions, leave it in the comments and I'll try to answer it as best as possible. Don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching.